Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Case Fisher. Uh, I make music as Auto Tectonic. You can find my music on Bandcamp. And I'm your first session today for uh, this Rise and Shine event, um, adjusting my levels. Today, I'm going to be talking about some sound design uh, fundamentals, really basic stuff that's applicable no matter what kind of gear you have, if you're working on the computer or if you're working with a synthesizer. Um, talking about building sounds from scratch and designing sounds that you might need um, in any kind of music production, you know, percussion or, or synth tones or anything else. Um, so let's get started. We're gonna probably have a 20 or 30 or 40 minute session. Um, I'm gonna switch my camera here. And of course you can ask questions and I'll be relayed those questions and I can answer them. Very happy to answer questions. Today, I'm gonna be working not on the computer, but with this synthesizer setup, I have a small Eurorack setup that's very, very simple, just five modules that kind of replicate a standard synthesizer, something you might find in any music store at pretty much any price point. Um, it has an oscillator to make sound, it has a filter, and it has some modulation. Uh, and we're going to be building our sounds on this today uh, in conjunction with a keyboard um, for easy pitch control. But um, like I said, everything that we go through today is going to be um, applicable whether you're making music in a digital audio workstation on your computer, uh, whether you have a synthesizer of any kind um, at home, uh, if you're making music on your phone with apps on your phone, synthesizer apps, um, the principles apply everywhere. Um, and uh, principles of sound design that kind of underlie, regardless of, of what the equipment is that you're that you're using. So again, today I have a Eurorack uh, modular synthesizer here. A modular synthesizer is like any other synthesizer you might find with a keyboard. You know, I have a keyboard here that's hooked up. Um, but what makes it modular is that every single piece of that synthesizer in the signal chain um, is separate from one another. So what that means and what that lets you do um, is make your own connections with patch cables uh, through that synthesizer. And, it, and that's why a lot of music made on a modular synthesizer is uh, weird and, and often experimental. Um, but today, like I said, we're gonna be using it in very standard, simple ways um, to explore fundamentals of, of sound design. So, and I also have a reverb pedal here just I can make things sound a little nicer when we get into making some sounds. Um, the first thing I will do is set up a basic patch um, that you might get out of any synthesizer VST in your DAW um, or pretty much any synthesizer that you buy that's that's hardware. So a really simple synth voice um, where the oscillator is going right out to our uh, amplifier and this goes right into my mixer. Um, and I have the pitch control from my keyboard wired into the pitch control of that oscillator. The oscillator is currently um, at a triangle wave with no nothing special going on, tuned to a more or less a middle C or low C. So if I turn up my amplifier, and let me know in the chat uh, or ask a question if my levels aren't mixed super well for you, but should be fine. This is a triangle wave. Really straightforward. This is anything that you might see pretty much anywhere. It's a really simple synthesizer. Really straightforward, right? But we want to make sounds with this that are more interesting than just a triangle wave or, you know, even a square wave or rather a, a ramp or a saw wave. That's already much more interesting. You know, a, a saw wave is the foundation of a lot of sounds. Um, but first, I think what we're gonna do is actually add some more life and bring some more interest to what others otherwise would be a very basic sound. So if I'm putting together a pop track or if I'm putting together, you know, if I'm making synth wave, you know, anything that, that requires the, the use of a synthesizer. So a lot of music genres nowadays, you know, I can play. I can play sounds on this, but there's a couple problems already that we're noticing. 
One is that it um, drones. It just plays forever. We have no note articulation. And obviously, that's something that uh, any synthesizer is going to have uh, built in. And we can patch that with my modular as well. Um, if you know what an envelope is, if you have experience with them um, in VSTs or in, in Ableton uh, or other DAWs or with synthesizers or, or anything like that, um, an envelope is something that you use to shape a sound. Um, and it can be applied to different things, but it's usually applied to the volume of the sound. And it can turn a drone, a drone like this, into something that has articulation like a real instrument. And so I'm going to take um, this cable, which is plugged into my keyboard, um, and plug it into my envelope generator. And it's going to create an envelope shape for me to help me shape that sound. Now, this is coming from my keyboard. And it's set to fire uh, a signal every time I hit a key, which is what you would expect. Um, so every time I hit a key, um, it's going to create this envelope and helps me shape the sound. Uh, the particular type of envelope I'm, I'm using is something that you'll see often uh, come up. And you know, it's a jargon acronym term. It's called an ADSR envelope. Um, and there are a lot of different types of envelopes. But an ADSR envelope, um, it stands for four phases. Uh, it has an attack phase, so the beginning of the sound. What it sounds like, is it soft or is it sharp? Uh, it has a decay, so it decays after that. Um, and then sits at a level for as long as you hold that key, which is the sustain. And then it releases at the end. Does it trail off in a long fashion, or does it stop abruptly? Um, but really, the important thing that you need to know, uh, if you're new to envelopes and you're new to synthesizer terminology, is that that particular type of envelope, the ADSR, is the one that works well with keyboards. And it's because it has that sustain. So if I hook this envelope, up to my amplifier, I have a longer cable. I actually do need a longer cable. So let's swap these two. So again, from my keyboard into my envelope generator. Excuse me. And from the envelope generator into the amplifier. Now, what's going to happen is if I just turn up my amp, now nothing is happening because I'm controlling it with the keyboard. And if I hit a key, I'm getting sound that's much more like a normal synthesizer. You'll notice that it holds for as long as I hold a key. So it has that um, real keyboard feel that, that hardware synthesizers have, or that in a DAW you'd be able to replicate with uh, a MIDI controller or anything like that. Um, now, that's just the sort of preset envelope shape that I'm working with. And I can obviously change that envelope to make my sound more what I want it to be or make it sound more interesting. So let's do that. Right now, it kind of the sound starts just right away. Um, but by increasing the attack stage of the envelope, the first stage where the sound ramps up, I can make that much softer. And that's how you can start working towards making pads uh, with a synthesizer, going from something that's very sharp to something that has a much more diffuse starting uh, stage. And, and that's one half of the envelope. Now, the other half of the envelope is the decay stage. And that also, right now, is very abrupt. It just stops as soon as I move my hand up off the keys. If I make the decay stage longer as well, it 
now we're really starting to turn that synth tone into something that more resembles a pad. Um, if I adjust my other stage just a little bit and kind of tweak to exactly what I want. So we went from something very sharp and intense to something that's that's quite comfortable and uh, quite relaxing. And of course, we don't have to stick to that sawtooth. We can go back to a triangle wave or a sine wave. And so that's how uh, using really simple envelope shapes, you can change the basic sound of a synthesizer. Um, we can take this further as well. So let's go back to our kind of a sawtooth shape. I'm actually blending a bit between a sawtooth and a triangle here with this particular oscillator. So go all the way to triangle, it sounds a little better on stream. And I'm going to lower my attack and decay so it's not quite so long. To show you the next thing, which is um, a feature that many envelope generators have, especially in the DAW, but also in hardware is the ability to change what that curve uh, looks like. So you know what? This is a bit of a last minute change to what I was planning, but I'm actually going to make some drawings. And I think that's going to help. So an ADSR envelope has The audio is cutting out for you on some of the notes after the attack. Ah, Brian, it is not Zoom, and that is very observant of you. Um, the equipment that I'm using to do this uh, has a flaw, or rather not a flaw, but it's, it's not the uh, intended behavior. What you're expecting is not the intended behavior of, of this particular envelope generator. Um, what's happening here is that every time I hit a note, it's sending a signal to my envelope generator to say, start the envelope from the first stage, from the attack stage. Uh, and because I haven't patched up something more complex uh, with what I have available here to get around that particular um, feature or constraint, uh, it means that when I have a long attack, and um, I go to another note really quickly, uh, sometimes it's going to skip the rest of the phases for that previous note and go directly onto the second note. This is one of these things that with, with um, analog synthesizers and, and modular in particular, it's a lot more difficult to get the, uh, the niceties of um, something like uh, knowing to start the next note only after the attack finishes or after the, the full phase finishes. Um, so that's what you're hearing, um, I expect. Uh, frankly, it could also be Zoom with the noise reduction. I am sending on, let me make sure I'm sending original sound. That might help as well. Um, so yes, envelopes. Uh, an envelope, and I will show you as best I can with this, has four stages. It has an attack, it has a decay, a sustain, and then a release. And I'm going to make these really dark 
so you can see them. But this is the shape of our envelope, not to scale, obviously. But there's an attack where the sound rises, then the sound decays a little bit to where I set the sustain level, so how loud the held note is, and then it decays down. But these are all linear segments right now, and a feature that can really add a lot of variety and complexity to your sound design is um, the use of linear versus exponential or logarithmic envelopes. That's a lot of math, and I don't really understand the math, um, but suffice to say, uh, these are ways to add curves and more dynamic um, movement to those lines. So making a curve logarithmic tends to slow it down, and that's because, as I do another drawing here, That's not great. Okay. Uh, say our attack phase in this otherwise linear envelope was logarithmic. Instead of looking like a straight line, it would look like a curve with a shape that goes up like this. That's a logarithmic curve. An exponential curve tends to make sounds uh, sound pluckier, uh, more like percussion, uh, and much snappier. And that's because their shape is the inverse of logarithmic. It's exponential, and it curves up like this. And the best way to see what that actually sounds like is, is to hear it, and you'll get a sense very quickly of what that, what that looks like. So this is a linear envelope. It ramps up uh, at a straight line, and then it ramps down again at a straight line. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, by making my attack phase uh, l l exponential, sorry, it's going to be snappier and faster. And if I make that very aggressive, so you can really hear it. It's a very quick, like, upward motion. Um, and we can do the same with the decay as well. So if we make the decay more exponential and pluckier, so that's what exponential sounds like. Logarithmic is the opposite, um, where things are going to sound a lot more casual or, or easygoing and, and, and more languid. longer as well. So now, very slow. Very slow, both to rise and to fall. So the shorthand for to remember the difference between logarithmic and exponential is that logarithmic is quick and plucky. Oh, sorry, <laughs> exponential is quick and plucky, and logarithmic is slow and lazy. Um, and with those, you can make a lot of uh, different types of sounds. You could make a really plucky sound in the attack phase and have it drop off very slowly in the decay phase. Uh, or vice versa. You could have a really, really lazy attack and then a sharp drop off. And those types of swells in an envelope shape are particularly useful when making like big sounding things like a synthesizer, making a big uh, synth line or a bass line, um, especially when things are going faster than all of this. So if I make these lengths all uh, quite a bit shorter, you'll also begin to, to hear the difference between linear to 
to and I add more exponential attack and decay. It becomes very plucky. You can hear the difference. All I'm going to do here is, is slam this single key over and over again and make the curve more exponential, and you'll really hear that pluckiness. So the shape of the envelope um, and the curve of the envelope makes a big difference as well. Um, we're not quite done yet, though. I have this. I have this nice. I have this nice synth line that I can play, but it doesn't have a lot of motion to it. And this is the next topic um, I want to talk about uh, with regards to sound design. And this very much applies while working in a DAW as well, um, because you have access to so many ways to filter and automate and, and create motion with, with animation and, and automation lines um, in something like Ableton or GarageBand. Uh, so here I have a filter. And what I'm going to do is take my sound uh, coming out of the oscillator, and instead of going right into my mixer or my amplifier, I'm going to go into my filter and then out through the low pass filter uh, option on this particular hardware. So now our oscillator is going through a low pass filter. With the filter fully open, it doesn't really sound much different, but as I uh, turn up the resonance and pick a nice filter cutoff, it sounds like a sawtooth wave going through a filter, which is pretty common. Pretty common and and um, easy way to make a sound that sounds really good, especially if you're making electronic music. It's very standard and 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 is always going to sound pretty good. Um, but we're going to use this filter to add a lot more interest to the uh, track, uh, or rather to the sound that we're making. So the first thing I'd like to do is um, take what I already have and use it again. I already have this envelope shape that I'm making with the keyboard, um, and I, I have it affecting the amplifier, the volume of the sound. Uh, and I also want to use it um, to affect the filter cutoff. Um, and to do that, I'm going to uh, copy the signal. Um, this is something that is uh, unique to your rack and that I'm using a special cable to do it. Um, but in a DAW or in many other synths, this is a pre-wired, or rather in, in many hardware synths, this is a pre-wired function um, that comes built in. And in the DAW, of course, um, you can set up any kind of automation that you want. And I would encourage you to experiment with different sources of automation. But right now, I'm just going to take that same uh, shape that we drew in the book before, and I'm going to send it to not just the volume of the sound, but also the filter cutoff of the sound. Uh -huh. I'm doing this through an attenuator, because in Eurorack, um, analog signals are very loud, and I want to be able to control how much of that envelope I send to the filter, so I have full control over what it sounds like. You'll see what I mean in a second. Um, and then I'm going to send that signal to the filter cutoff. And so, with again, with, with not doing that, it sounds like this. When I'm modifying the filter cutoff with the envelope, we'll have to dial this in a little bit. Right. 
the magic of analog synthesizers, everybody. You'll just bear with me. So now what's happening is that same envelope is um, acting on the opening and closing of the filter as well as on the volume of the sound. And it's subtle, but whenever we press a key, not only is the amplifier opening, but the filter is also opening and closing, uh, affecting our sound. So you see, it, it gets a lot darker near the end uh, and, be, and near the beginning of the attack and the um, end of the decay phase, the release phase rather, and it's very bright when I'm holding the note. And I can also adjust the bass cutoff of that filter to make it overall darker or brighter. So we've gone from essentially this with that with the filter that closed a, f a kind of a flat sound even with the filter open we're pretty flat down to something that has a lot more uh, character. Uh, and again, you can use um, any kind of automation source to affect the filter um, in your signal chain. And I would, I would highly recommend doing that. A filter is one of the most expressive um, pieces of equipment in, in, in a signal chain uh, that you could have, whether it's digital or analog or in a DAW or in hardware. Um, uh, and playing the filter and modifying the features of and an output of a filter is one of the best ways to to add more interest to your sound so i'm going to do that again um, this filter happens to have a second input for automation um, in the daw you can just add another layer of automation to to any parameter you want um, but i'm going to use what's called a low frequency oscillator to affect the signal of that filter as well. And a low frequency oscillator, if you're familiar with music terminology, um, is the same as the kind of oscillator that makes sound, except it goes really, really slow. And in the analog world, um, we use those signals to control other signals. So a low frequency oscillator is, if it's a sine wave, which I'll be using today, it's just a really, really slow signal that goes up, and it goes down, and it goes up again, endlessly. And I'll just make sure that's visible for you. Uh, and what we're going to do with that signal that's slowly moving up and down um, is put that signal into our filter to affect the cutoff of the filter. And that's going to add a lot more liveliness um, and expressiveness to the sound. So before, with just the one envelope, with, with no additional automation from the LFO, when I'm holding a key, excuse me, it sounds like this. just goes on and it's not that interesting. Um, so if I'm holding a long note or if I'm making a pad with this patch, um, it's it doesn't sound very interesting, especially over a long period of time, like a full song. If I include that low frequency signal that's slowly moving the filter cutoff up and down, this is what we're going to get. <laughs> And 
can make that as subtle or as extreme as you want. You know, at a really extreme case, it's going to sound like this, all the way open and closed, until the sound is actually fully closed at the bottom of the wave. Um, and I'll speed it up a bit to show you. Uh, or when it's very, very subtle, like this. And changing the speed of the LFO changes that character as well. So all together, when I'm playing something, I have two different automation tracks, essentially, two different sources of automation affecting the filter of this oscillator. Um, I have my sawtooth wave going into it, and I have an envelope affecting the output. And uh, what started as a very simple, dry um, sawtooth wave is now something that's an expressive instrument. The last thing I'll talk about um, in this uh, sound design demo uh, before I sign off onto the next uh, presenter is this reverb pedal. It's just been sitting very patiently here the whole time. Um, sounds This sounds very dry right now. Effects are one of the best ways, you know, no surprise, to dress up a sound and make it much more interesting and lively um, when you're in, using it in a piece of music. Um, so this synth line or this bass line uh, is going to be great. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of reverb and delay to, uh, to make it a little more rich and a little more vibrant and it'll fit into a mix a little bit better. So this pedal uh, has a, a reverb side and a delay side. First, I'll start with a delay, because I want to dial in a short, um, not too intense delay. Um, and the reason for that, with a bit of a darker sound as well. The reason for that is it's really easy to go overboard doing sound design with effects. I'm certainly guilty of this. Um, so with no delay. With the delay, so it's quite subtle. And let me know if you're not hearing much of a difference in the comments and the chat um, on the stream, because I can certainly turn up my my send on the mixer here. But what you're getting uh, is instead of a very again dry sound that begins and ends. You get echoes of the previous note and the previous timbre of the sound um, echoed in the delay. Uh, and my delay is set to be quite dark, so it's going to sound very natural. Um, as it fades out uh, in volume, it's also going to get darker and, and filtered. <laughs> course. Reverb is really easy. Again, don't overdo it. And I think I'm going to call it there. Um, I would love questions for our last five minutes of scheduled time. Um, and I'll just play a little bit more to give you a sense of everything that we've been doing here. Um, and you know what, I'll even actually, I will, I will remove my envelope from the filter and turn the cutoff entirely to up, turn off my effects. And we started with this. And uh, in a few minutes with um, some smart uh, use of a filter and judicious use of a delay and reverb pedal and being very careful <coughs> with how we set our envelope settings to modulate the volume and filter of the sound, we end up with this. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if there's no questions, then um, this has been sound design fundamentals with a modular synthesizer. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Again, if there are questions, I'll be on the stream for a little bit to speak to them in the chat. But uh, thank you so much, everyone. I will wait to be told how to move on um, to the next presentation.